Hey guys, the Comics Kid 2099 here. I want to talk to you about a movie that I recently watched, Catching Fire. This is the sequel to The Hunger Games. I don't remember when this movie came out, but not too long ago. It's been on Netflix for a month or two, and I just recently watched it. And a while back, I reviewed The Hunger Games, the book, and The Hunger Games, the movie. And I don't really remember what all I said in those reviews, but I pretty much, I like The Hunger Games, both the book and the movie. I think I like the book a little bit more than the movie. And one thing I said about the movie was that no matter how well you do a movie that's an adaptation of a book, you are going to have to leave things out and you're going to have to change the pace a little bit because the Hunger Games books, all three of them are about like 300-ish pages. And the pacing on a 300-page novel is a little bit different than the pacing in a two-hour movie. And I was noticing in watching the Catching Fire movie, and I should go ahead and mention, although I did read The Hunger Games, the book, I did not read Catching Fire. Uh, I read like a chapter, and I just never got around to finishing it. It's not that I'm against the book or anything. It's just that prose it's very hard for me to get through prose usually. And so I did not read the Catching Fire book, but watching this movie, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really enjoyable, but there were a few times where I was thinking, okay, uh, this is something that probably worked better in the book. And the first thing, if you've seen the first Hunger Games movie or if you've read the Hunger Games book, then you know, actually, if you've seen the Hunger Games movie, you probably don't know this because in the Hunger Games book, Katniss is pretending to be in love with PETA, and they are both from the same district, and pretending to be in love with them is what's getting people to sympathize with her, and she's getting points when she's in the arena, and that's kind of helping to save her life and keep her alive, and pretending to be in love with him is what's keeping her alive. Well, then we find out at the end of the first book that PETA was not pretending, and when he finds out that Katniss was, it kind of destroys him, and that's picked up in the second book and also in the second movie. Well, the problem is, at the end of the first movie, PETA does not find out. Uh, they don't even mention that at all, and so it kind of leaves that to be brought up in this movie, and so in this one, they have to catch up with where the first book ended, and so PETA already knows at this point that Katniss doesn't love him and that she was just pretending, and then I get the feeling that in the book, over the course of some 300 pages, that Katniss actually does fall in love with PETA over the course of Catching Fire, and I don't think it works very well in the movie because at the beginning of the movie she's acting very cold to him, she does, she clearly does not love him, and then the president says, listen, I know you don't love him, but you need to convince me, you need to convince all of these people so that we don't have a riot on our hands and the people don't find out that you were faking it and that the only reason that you did this thing to kind of cheat your death in the Hunger Games last year was to rebel against the system because if you rebelled against the system and the people find out about that, then we're going to have a riot and you don't want that. And and so Katniss is trying very hard to convince everybody, yeah, we're in love. And I get the feeling that in a 300-page book, that comes off a little better, that slowly over time, she is falling in love with Peta for real. But in the movie, it doesn't work that way, because at the very end of the movie, spoilers, uh, Peta is left in the arena. And then these people who have formed this secret uh, revolution against the system, they rescue Katniss from the arena, and then she's like freaking out and attacks Hamish, who is her mentor from the first movie and book. Uh, she freaks out and attacks him because he left Peta to die in there. And it gets I get the feeling, seeing that scene, that she's come to actually care about him. But we saw absolutely no indication in the rest of the movie that she was actually falling in love with him. Uh, she does kind of, uh, she's a little bit worried when he almost dies, but I felt like that was just, you know, he's my friend and I don't want him to die. And I think that it could have done a little bit of a better job making that point come across in the movie. And again, it's one of those things. In two hours, you're not left with a lot of time to do everything that a 300-page book does. The other thing that I wanted to complain about doesn't really have so much to do with pacing it has more to do with everyone in this movie knows something that Katniss does not know and I get the feeling that the actual reason that Katniss doesn't know it is because she is our point of view character and if she knows then the audience knows and this is a reveal that I feel like Susan Suzanne Collins was saving for the end of the book and therefore it's saved for the end of the movie to give the audience a, a wow moment but it doesn't really, it makes all these other characters look like real jerks because they're keeping something hidden from Katniss for a reason that I feel like is kind of bogus. Uh, we find out that 
the capital, the capital is the system uh, that she kind of rebelled against at the end of the first movie, uh, we find out that they are apparently watching her at all times. And so this secret underground revolution that's forming, it turns out it involves like every character in this movie except for Katniss and the president. And they are all like working against the system and they're doing stuff and they're kind of making Katniss do stuff too, but they're not telling her why they're doing it. And then Katniss doesn't trust any of these people. And then we find out, oh, all of these guys are good guys. They were helping her all along. And why did they not tell her? And they say, well, it's because you were being watched this whole time and we couldn't risk telling you. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe in the Hunger Games arena, like in the actual dome, maybe that excuse works because there's literally cameras all over the place and no matter what they say and do, they are being televised all over the world. But when she wasn't in the arena, I feel like they could have said, Psst, by the way, we've got a revolution going on and you're kind of the linchpin to this whole thing. I feel like Hamish could have told her that before she went in and they say you had to not know about it otherwise they would have known something was up and I just feel like that's a whole bunch of characters who don't trust Katniss and maybe rightly so maybe she wouldn't have been able to have pulled off this big lie that everyone else is pulling off so well but I, I don't know. I don't really buy it. Uh, it's one of those things. It feels like the only reason these characters aren't telling her this is because the audience doesn't need to know about it until the end of the movie. And there's one minor thing that I did want to complain about, and that is the first movie in the first book is so... People were so enthralled with it because it's about kids murdering kids. And I feel like this movie kind of takes a step back from that. Uh, Katniss and Peeta go back into the games, but that whole thing about... I have to murder all of these people if I want to survive, that is completely gone. Uh, because Hamish is talking about, if you want to survive in there, you are going to need allies. And immediately I said, why? Because when she goes in there, she's eventually going to have to kill these people. Why does she need allies? Uh, if she did so well in the previous game, she could just as easily kill all of these people by herself this time. She doesn't really need six allies, which is what she has. And it doesn't really address that. It doesn't make any sense. And I think the real reason that she needs allies is because all of these people are actually part of an underground revolution against the capital, and she needs to be allied with them so that we can be like, oh, yeah, these guys are good guys. They're not bad guys. But it doesn't really work because Hamish doesn't mention, yeah, you are going to have to kill your allies at some point. They never even bring that part up. And then also, a lot of these people are older. They're not kids murdering other kids. Uh, you've got Felix Leiter from the Daniel Craig, uh, James Bond movies. He's in there because they, they throw this wrinkle into the games where adults who won previous games can come back in and uh, fight in the games once again. And so it feels like it loses some of that edge that it had in the first movie. And also, other than her allies, you don't get to see any of the other kids here, really. Uh, every time they show in the sky when one of these kids dies, uh, I keep thinking, who is that? Have we seen that character before? And even all the ones that uh, they kill, like Katniss kills a few of them, I don't, rem I don't know anything about them. Uh, in the first movie, in the first book, maybe it's because I read the first book, but I felt like I knew a little bit about Thresh, and I knew a little bit about Kato and the girl from his district, I don't remember her name, and Foxface. I felt like... These other kids, you got to see them a little bit, and there was more of a focus of Katniss versus the other kids, whereas here, there's more of a focus on Katniss doesn't know something. What does she not know? And then at the end, there's a revolution coming, and you're part of it, and it kind of loses track of that thing that the first movie was about, and maybe it's because if the first movie and the second movie were about the same thing, then maybe people would get bored, maybe, but I feel like it's becoming something entirely different. Uh, people came to this to see morally gray kids killing other kids, and they're not getting that here. Uh, Katniss kills a few kids, but they just sweep it under the rug, and they kind of pretend like it didn't happen, and they barely focus on it in this movie. And once again, maybe that would have worked better in a 300-page book. Maybe we would have had more of a focus on these other kids that Katniss and her allies are having to fight against, but Mostly, this movie was about Katniss and her allies fighting against Mother Nature. You have a blood rain, you have uh, crazy baboons, you have the smoke monster from Lost, you've got a lightning tree. Uh, it's not really about Katniss fighting the other tributes, and I do feel like that's a problem. Now, maybe if it was about Katniss fighting the other tributes, I would have been complaining that this movie doesn't really do anything different from the previous movie. Maybe. 
I don't know, but I feel like this movie ventures too far from what it became well known for in the first place, and it doesn't take as many risks, uh, so to speak. That was a problem for me. Maybe it's a problem for other people. I don't really know. Uh, that's all I have to say about this movie. I actually did enjoy this movie. I just didn't enjoy it as much as I did The Hunger Games. I've heard people say that Catching Fire is the best book, and they loved it a lot more than The Hunger Games, and I'm kind of like, really? After seeing this movie, I don't really think that that's necessarily the case. Or maybe it's just that this movie doesn't do a very good go very good job of capturing what was awesome about the book. But I definitely think this movie is a step down from the first Hunger Games, but that's just me. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Also, if you like this review, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will be back later in the week with another video. So I will see you guys then. In the meantime, have a great rest of the day. Catch you later.